I'm obviously not the first person, and I doubt I'll be the last, to make a video on War Thunder's premium problem, but I still think it's a good idea to stay fresh and informed on War Thunder's problems. Primarily, I want to focus on some of the newer problems we've been facing lately in the past year or two, with some of these higher and more modern premiums being added to the game. And in the background, you'll likely see me dogging on people in some of these premiums. Unlike some of my previous videos, I want to keep this an open-ended discussion and less so a rant. Before we get into things though, I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters. You guys are the reason I can keep making videos, and quite honestly, I need your guys' help. For as little as $5 a month, you guys can help me out and make sure I don't, you know, go broke. And in return, I'll keep posting bangers for you guys. First off, let's identify the problem. In my eyes, one of the biggest problems right now is that new players who are just getting onto the game for the first time have access to incredibly high probability of kill missiles. Before things like the Harriers were added, you had to be a somewhat okay player for the most part to capitalize off of the premiums before that were more based on performance. Sure, they held your hand a lot, but you had to at least know how to fly the plane. Now though, any level 15 Andy can pick up his AV-8 Harrier or A-10 Warthog and go shoot some people with long range, high probability of kill missiles. These people also have to face off against the same types of missiles. As on both sides of the matchmakers, you see absolute annihilation coming off of the armament that these jets can carry. Performance really isn't a focus anymore, so you don't have to be as skilled at the game in order to get a decent amount of kills. Well, why is this a problem? Well, for one, it really disincentivizes team fighting, which is really unfortunate in a 12v12 team-based game. Sure, it is fun to get, you know, those 1v5 epic clutches on your own every once in a while, but the fact of the matter is, is that your team has a really large influence on how well you do throughout the game, especially when you yourself are not in an especially overpowered vehicle. If you're flying around, let's say, your F-100 Super Saber, you're gonna need assistance with a lot of people on the enemy team, especially if they also have all aspect missiles on their team. And when you get new players coming into the game on these high tier jets, a lot of times they don't even know how to use their flares effectively to counter these types of threats. I'm sure all of us at the tier have experienced the full teams of F5Cs that just crumble within like the first minute of the match because they really just have no clue what they're doing and a lot of them are even taking bombs, making your team a lot less effective at fighting the enemy team. This also causes much more rampant team killing than we've had in the past. Now that brand new players have access to missiles that can reach out really far and turn really hard, we have a lot of cases where these new players are firing missiles from incredibly bad angles that end up guiding into their team instead. And finally, a lot of these meta vehicles are locked behind money, and there really isn't that much you can do about it. You either sacrifice a lot of your time, or you sacrifice your wallet. If you're not a fan of spending your money, the main way to get these vehicles is to grind out event vehicles and sell them on the Gaijin marketplace. When you do that, you can then buy Golden Eagles with the Gaijin currency you earned, giving a somewhat level playing field for free-to-play players, but it really just doesn't match the sheer effectiveness of whipping out Mom's credit card. Another recommendation, just if you're a free-to-play player, is to go through the Warbond shop and look at all the effective things they have in there, and learn how to effectively grind the battle pass. If you can stock up on war bonds and complete your special tasks, it'll give you access to free talismans and premiums to help you grind out your tech trees faster. Well, what can we do about it? There isn't much, but for the most part, just make your voice heard. If you don't like something, you can politely take to the War Thunder forums and post about it. Sure, there's like a 99% chance it doesn't do anything, but when enough people do speak up, there's a pretty good track record of Gaijin reverting or changing things. Remember though, don't go after any of the Gaijin employees personally. A lot of them are really nice people, they just don't have the power to make the changes that we need in the game. 
It has to work its way up the Gaijin ladder, and it can happen if we just make ourselves thorough but polite. As individuals, we may not have the power to do very much, but as a collective, we have a lot more sway. I would like to think that we have the chance to make the game better. The only other thing really is just make sure you and your friends are improving at the game. If you're one of these players that bought their way into a high tier premium, there are plenty of resources out there to help you learn and get better at the game. And I guarantee you, your teammates will greatly appreciate it if you take the time to do this. They may not say it, obviously, but when a teammate goes out of their way to help me out in a match, or is just overall beneficial for the team, it's so much better of an experience. I genuinely enjoy top tier combat when I see that I have teammates that I can trust. There are plenty of communities out there who are also willing to help, so don't be scared to ask people how you can get better at the game. Finally, how can Gaijin solve the problem? Well, I'm not an employee of Gaijin, obviously, so I don't really have the catch-all solution that would please both the player base and the company. There are still a few ways we can go about this, though. My favorite solution that I've come up with is just not letting people play premiums higher than one tier above the highest tier they own in any nation. For example, let's say you're at rank 4 in the US. Not only could you buy a rank 5 premium for the US, but you would be able to buy a rank 5 premium for any country. However, you wouldn't be able to get a rank 6 premium until you legitimately grind out rank 5 in one nation. This does two things. One, it gives low tier premiums a reason to exist. Outside of just the small select few that are overpowered or just really fun to play, low tier premiums don't really do anything to help the grind that much. I don't think I've ever used a premium lower than like rank 4 for grinding, as they're really just not worth the money right now because of how little you can grind out. The only reason to really play low tier premiums is because they're really fun or overpowered. This also forces players to learn and get better at the game. The biggest killer in top tier right now is inexperience, and it's why the MiG-29 had such an awful win rate on release, because it also dropped at the same time as the MiG-23 ML, it flooded entire teams who were just very inexperienced and thus couldn't really hold their own in top tier. Or vice versa with the Harrier GR1 situation we had a while ago. Same with situations like we have with the SU-11, where it's drastically under-tiered, and yet it still sits at a pretty low battle rating because of statistics, as player skill has basically gone out the window for that plane, despite it basically being an 8.0 plane that sat at 7.0 and just now barely moved up to 7.3. Now, obviously that isn't a perfect solution, but it's my favorite solution. Though I guess you could take that with a grain of salt because I have Gaijin content creator benefits. I think the second best option, or you could use this combined with basically anything, is just to rework the matchmaker. The matchmaker as it stands right now kinda just throws anyone together. The only restriction is that you can only have 4 aircraft of the highest BR of that match. So let's say you're having a 4.0 to 5.0 match. You can only have four 5.0 planes on each team. However, when a bunch of vehicles are spammed out all the time, you'll run into situations like, for example, the F5C, where you can have an entire team of 10.3 F5C players. Meanwhile, the enemy team is completely stacked with 11.0 planes, which isn't the absolute highest BR, but generally outperforms the 10.3s in basically every way. Alternatively, Gaijin could rework the matchmaker. It would likely be more beneficial if instead, we matched a similar number of planes at a similar BR on each team. Instead of this Wild West, the only restriction is the number of maximum BR players. I don't know if I got that point across well, but I don't know how else to convey it. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? They could also do this for levels. They could put a similar number of players at similar levels to each other on each team. So that level 10 Temmie in his AV-8A Harrier can be put up against level 10 Andy in his SU-25. 
Obviously, levels aren't purely indicative of skill, but for the most part, it follows a bell curve. Most players learn at the same rate and are generally the same skill level. The biggest thing, though, is just moving away from statistic-based balancing. Because of statistics, we've had a lot of planes at tiers that are way lower than they should be. You know, SU-25s, A-10s, AV-8s. The list goes on and on of all these missile premiums that kind of ruin the middle tiers of jets. If that gets sorted out, then it would open up so much content that has kind of died over the past couple years. Which I would be a fan of as early supersonics is my favorite jet tier of combat. If you guys have any ideas as well, make sure to leave them in the comments. This is a discussion after all, and I would love to hear what you guys can come up with. Especially as the longer War Thunder goes on, the easier it'll be to buy your way into higher and higher tier combat. Heck, for all I know, the F-20 Tiger Shark might become a premium at some point, who knows. I would not want to see level 5s slinging AMRAMs around. But that's the direction War Thunder is going, and if nothing changes, we're gonna have to be prepared for that. That's all for this video, remember to subscribe if you enjoyed it as I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. Other than that, there's the Discord server in the description. If you'd like to be part of a growing community of active War Thunder players, make sure to join that. Other than that, that's all for this video, I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.